that got me thinking, why use 95 degree air to try and cool anything? Why not use 60 degree water? So this is a Miami heat pump. It's a stainless steel air conditioner all in one unit. Rather than having a compressor outside and a coil inside, both of them are in this box. So the coil takes up this whole half of the unit and it will blow suck air in over that coil and blow it out here. And you can run this unit either way. You can compress either side of the coil. So you can make hot air or cold air with nothing but electricity and of course, and water. It doesn't really matter what kind of water you get. I'm gonna be getting water out of this swamp cooler. So I know it's always gonna be 60 degrees. Now in the winter time, I could, uh, I could instead hook it up the solar array. I've got uh, piping, small piping, going back and forth under the bottom of that. That could be a source of warm water and I could I could heat the house using this system. Uh, so we're gonna kind of hook this up out here and see what happens. Now I mentioned the, uh, the one air coil here and inside we have a coaxial exactly like I built inside, although instead of straightened out, it's all coiled up here. So the hot or cold from the compressor, which is a Copeland scroll, trades that heat with whatever water you pump in and out of this unit. Again, I will turn the swamp cooler to pump only, which is gonna pump water out of the bottom of the tray through this black hose and into the unit. And it'll come back out this green hose. And that leads up to the top of the evaporator of the swamp cooler. Now, as I switch the thermostat to cool here, the compressor will begin by pressurizing refrigerant into this loop, which is an inside pipe jacketed by water that's flowing through the system here. So we're sucking 85 degree air in the inlet here and blowing out 45 degree air. Come over to the swamp cooler, which is getting some pretty warm water in evaporating it. Uh, we're going to get it's about 70 degree air, 69 and a half uh, degree air out of the swamp cooler. Now that could be used to cool underneath the solar panels, making them more efficient. And in the meantime, the water being provided to the heat exchanger of the heat pump is 59 degrees. So it's getting nice cold water out of the bottom of this swamp cooler, the evaporation, it doesn't really matter how hot the water, water is coming in the top, the evaporation is always going to take you down to the wet bulb, which is typically about 60 degrees here in Colorado. Now the hot water that, that's coming out of the heat pump is coming around to the top of the evaporator pad, and we're pushing 89 to 90 degrees. I can, it feels just steamy over here. 90 degree water, and that's getting evaporated down into the 50s at the bottom. So we'll measure the flow rate of this water at 90 degrees and figure out how many BTUs we're rejecting to the water. It was uh, five gallons a minute, took one minute to do that. And we are drawing a steady 13 amps. So 300 gallons per hour times a delta T of 30 degrees equals almost 74,000 BTUs an hour, all for only 3,120 watts consumed. That versus 48,000 BTUs using 4,560 watts from the traditional air conditioning unit. So the water sourced heat pump is uh, more than twice as efficient as the old fashioned air conditioner, even with the heat exchanger. So that, that 50 degree air is coming out at 44 miles an hour out this duct opening here. Tell you, this feels good on a hot day. That is cranking. So the energy consumption pretty much makes sense. This is a 12 sear uh, air conditioner, and the water source heat pump here by the Miami heat pumps is actually as much as a 27 sear unit. So uh, it makes sense that we're getting more than double the efficiency out of this unit. So I have some experiments that I'll post uh, on a different video regarding the thermal heat exchange between these pipes 
and the back side of this solar array, but this is a source of uh, warm water to exchange heat with the heat exchanger in the wintertime and actually heat the house using that heat pump instead of a furnace. So no gas consumed whatsoever. We can get 75,000 BTUs out of that heat pump, which is the same amount that we would get uh, out of a, an 85% efficiency furnace at this altitude, 100,000 BTU furnace. So uh, very easy to replace the furnace in the house with uh, a heat pump powered entirely by solar energy. What's so amazing to me is that um, 3,120 watts is equal to 10,600 BTUs per hour. Now with this same amount of electricity, we're actually getting almost 75,000 BTUs of heat out of this Miami heat pump. So we're running 700% efficiency, which means we could heat and cool this entire 6,000 square foot house using just 10 of our 61 solar panels and without burning a drop of gas or natural gas. So let's go take a ride in my electric time machine. We'll, we'll go back in time to when uh, this pond is frozen over and see what kind of heat we can actually draw uh, by using the heat exchanger on the back of these panels. So in this experiment, I have four of the 16 panels under here uh, connected to the drip lines and they just connect here into this like manifold with the little pop fittings and it is running just sitting down here it's about 65 degrees there's just a lot of heat coming off the panels that otherwise would be lost I eventually will also put some styrofoam paneling up under here to contain all of the heat so again this is just with these top four of the 16 Panels hooked up and we're gonna pump some freezing water in and see what temperature it comes out and what volume. So the suction water, I mean, it's 33 degrees. Obviously it's just above freezing. Expecting about a 10 degree rise. It looks like, yeah, about what we're getting. So it took, uh, took 10 seconds to do 32 ounces. So that's about a 40 second uh, gallon and it is continuing at 43 degrees, a 10 degree temperature rise. Uh, one other benefit, uh, the panels are running cooler, about 78 degrees versus one that's uh, not being cooled, over 90 degrees. Uh, let's see what kind of difference that makes in our output of these panels. We're getting 5.1 amps off one of these panels that's being cooled, and the ones that are not being cooled, same exact panel, 4.9. Two tenths of an amp more by cooling it. So now let's go back to the future and see how dramatic the improvement is during the summer sun heat. So with the water off, we're getting 4.6 amps on these hot panels. And they're going to be a much hotter panel now due to the summer sun. And we'll turn the water on and see how much that cools. We increased to 5.3 amps with the cooling loop on. That represents about a 12% increase in power, which is about 600 watts. On this array, uh, it would be about another 1,200 watts on the roof array if it was all cooled. So uh, cooling the panels can give you an extra 1,800 watts. That's more than enough power to run uh, even part of the air conditioner, much less any circulatory pumps, etc. So there's a big value to keeping the panels cool, and it's free heat um, all winter long. Subscribe to this channel, Net Positive, for more videos on converting to the electric lifestyle.